104.5 The Team, your home for New York sports. It's like, this guy's like baseball Santa Claus to me. It's like, as soon as I talk to him, I know, I know I'm about to open my presents. Buster only, back on the program. Buster, we missed you. How have you been? I've been great, although I'm taking uh, your, your kind words with a grain of salt because I know that you're just excited to talk baseball because uh, this spring – it feels like you're not going to get a lump of coal in your stocking, right? <laughs> the Yankees have had a great camp. The Mets, generally speaking, have had a great camp, uh, so a lot to get to. Right. Okay. So let's let's go right into camp. Like I know that everyone's telling me I need to get over the Glaber Torres starting the season at shortstop, but I just I mean, if I could put this uh, rationally, why, Buster? I don't want to get over it. Well, they just want to make sure that he's not overwhelmed. Okay. Uh, that that's part of it. Now. Uh, the level of confidence that they have, that they have a star player, like a superstar level player, is very high. And it's not only the Yankees, it's folks with other teams. In fact, I, you know, I had a conversation with an evaluator with another team. He said, you know where the Cubs were uh, two years ago with the amount of prospects? He said, that's where the Yankees are right now in terms of impact players. And Glaber Torres is right at the head of that list. But remember, he hasn't played above Class A. Do I think that there's a chance that he's going to be in the big leagues before uh, June 1st? I do. Uh, I think in, uh, you know, he has a chance to really help this team this year. He's going to be, I think, a really big safety net in case Chase Headley looks like he's not ready to go or if Didi Gregorius has some sort of a setback. Uh, as he comes back from a shoulder issue. All right, you've already got Levac really excited, but let's talk about the starting pitching before he claims yeah, the 2017 okay, right, right, right World now. Series championship. We know Severino is now fourth in the rotation. Should Yankee fans be concerned that they haven't figured out the fifth pitcher? Uh, well, they, I, I guarantee you that if you gave them true serum, they figured it out, but they don't have to announce it until they get closer to April 16th or April 15th, which is the date I think that they actually need the fifth starter for the first time, which is why they're holding back. So I wouldn't read into that the fact that they haven't revealed it as if they're like, oh, my God, we have no solutions. Yeah, they have some guys in mind. And uh, you know, there's left-handed pitcher Montgomery who uh, emerged in spring training. They're excited about Joe Girardi who talked to me about the unusual angle that he throws from from a left-hander gives the Yankees a different look. They have other guys in the minor leagues, and I think they you know, will pick the fifth starter based on the, the best available information at the time they actually need the fifth starter. Buster only with us right now on 104.5 The Team, which means baseball is coming. Uh, the Yankees start Sunday not, Sunday afternoon, actually. Uh, Buster, this, this, I've been, this will shock you. I've been a little irrational about this Clint Frazier kid. I'll, I'll, I'll randomly scream, bring me the ginger uh, during the show. <laughs> what are you hearing about this young guy that they picked up from the Indians? Well, he certainly is talented. I will tell you this. At the time that uh, the deal went down last summer, uh, I spoke with some evaluators uh, who'd seen Frazier, and what they basically said to me was, Really good talent, and they wonder if he's a fit for New York. And I, I have not uh, spoken to him firsthand one time in my life, so all I'm going to do is you know, uh, offer you observations from afar. It abs- as someone who's covered the Yankees for a long time, it jumped out at me when this spring he, the length of his hair became a story in the Yankee camp. That is unusual because there is a culture there and it fit in with what those evaluators told me last year, because I know in the past, I mean, can you imagine if Derek Jeter, the first time he showed up in camp, it became a story about whether or not he had facial hair or long hair. That just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't have happened with Mariano Rivera. Those guys figured out that, you know what, as a young guy, it's probably better if I'm not the story. So moving forward, uh, you know, that's going to be one of my questions about him and, and whether or not he's going to be someone who fits within that organization. But keep in mind, it's not as if their farm system rests upon this one player, and that's what uh, you know, the person I talked to on Wednesday basically was saying to me. They have a ton of guys that they can turn to and prospects, and if they're competitive this year, if they're better than what people think, maybe Clint Frazier becomes a piece in a deal to get a starting pitcher later this year. Another New York team making headlines is the New York Mets. Juris Familia, 15-game suspension by Major League Baseball, but why only 15 games? Well, it comes down to this, and I started to hear this from folks within Major League Baseball back in December, that they were having a difficult time establishing uh, evidence. Uh, and, and they're really, Major League Baseball in this case, I think probably is in the same situation a lot of law enforcement officials have when you have a case of domestic violence, or uh, you know, alleged domestic violence, where you have uh, Jerice's wife basically indicating uh, 
uh, and this is why the charges against him were dropped, I, I did not feel threatened during this incident. Mm. There's no evidence of physical violence uh, where something happened to her. Uh, there's certainly less evidence than there was in the Aroldis Chapman case where they established that he had fired a weapon, what, six, seven times, and, and so that became a basis for the 30-game suspension. And in Major League Baseball's position, this was like a plea bargain, right, where they got Juris Familia to agree to some sort of a penalty, and given their lack of facts, that's what the, the level where they thought they could go. My guess is is that if they tried to give him 30, 50, 80 games, then uh, Familia's representatives probably would have uh, taken that to arbitration, and Major League Baseball would have been there without much evidence to, uh, to really push on. Buster, only with us right now. Baseball season is is upon us, my friends. We can all rejoice. Uh, don't look at the snow outside your window. It's 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 not real. It's an aberration. Uh, <laughs> Buster, so so staying with those Mets. Like I know we always like you know everything comes down to the health of their starting pitchers, but they're like nine deep with like real yep. starters. Like why aren't the Yankees and the Mets on the phone right now working something out? Well, you know because they will never make trades, right? I mean, <laughs> you get the once in a lifetime. Uh, uh, Robin Ventura for David Justice type deal, but generally speaking, they're they're not going to make trades. I, I actually wouldn't be surprised if there were some conversations. I just don't think the team two teams can actually execute something. And you're right in the way that you you talk about the Mets uh, and the depth of the starting pitching. Yeah, it's not good that Steven Matz has an elbow issue, but on the other hand, my God, Robert Gazelman looks great this spring. I mean, his stuff is electric. And you've got Zach Wheeler, and you've got Seth Lugo. And keep in mind, Noah Syndergaard has looked like a monster this spring and how he's throwing. Jacob deGrom looks like a Cy Young candidate. And I've been encouraging people, when we talk about Matt Harvey, stop comparing 2017 Matt Harvey to what he was in his initial games in the big leagues and just look at him as a major league pitcher. This is a guy who, after Tommy John surgery in 2015, had a sub-3 ERA. Okay, he's a terrific pitcher, uh, and he's building velocity as spring training goes along. Last time out, 96, 97 miles per hour. This will be a deep rotation. The question is going to be in the offensive consistency. How much protection will uh, uh, Ioannis Cespedes, who looks like a monster, uh, get? Uh, that's going to be more the issue, but the pitching should be tremendous. Okay, Buster, let's uh, let's let's get into this because you brought up spring training. Gaz yells at me all the time that it's basically practice, but they've looked really good. Uh, has spring training changed any any of your feelings, or what has it made you think about what's going to happen in the AL East? When I first turned in my picks, uh, I had the Red Sox winning the division. I had the Blue Jays being a wild card team. The Yankees being out of the mix. Uh, I, I called in and I changed them because. The Red Sox spring training, generally speaking, if you were to do spring training power rankings, okay, the Yankees would be somewhere around number one. They, they might be number two or number three. The Royals have had a really good camp. Uh, but the Red Sox would probably be around 30. I, it's been an absolute mess for them this spring. We went into spring training knowing that there are questions about the, the Red Sox and their pitching depth. What happens? David Price goes down. He's out indefinitely. He would shock no one if at some point this year he's getting Tommy John surgery based on the information that we have. Drew Pomerantz uh, goes down with an elbow issue. That's a big concern. Stephen Wright, uh, their knuckleballers, now pitching with a knee brace, and they don't have a, minor, a lot of minor league depth. Plus, Tyler Thornburg, their big uh, trade acquisition in the offseason with Milwaukee, he's got a shoulder issue. He's out indefinitely. Big hits for the Red Sox. I took them out of the playoffs. I got the Blue Jays winning the division. I got the Red Sox, or excuse me, the Yankees, who had a great spring, especially Greg Bird, my goodness, uh, <laughs> making it as a wild card pick. You would think that LeVanc just won the World Series. <laughs> Hearing both the Red Sox get crushed and the Yankees get better, he was celebrating right here. We'll go to the National League side just to temper LeVanc's celebration dance right now, <laughs> National League. Uh, I've got the Mets in the postseason yes. as a wild card team, and now, as you ask me, I think that's how I have them. Pretty sure I got the Nationals, uh, who I think are a better regular season team. They look so uh, good, winning the division. But I know I have the Mets in the playoffs. I just think they have so much starting pitching depth and, and so much excellence there that they'll get in. Anybody who doesn't pick the Cubs to make the postseason win the Central uh, is an idiot, in my <laughs> opinion. Uh, the Dodgers I've got in the West. And the second wild card team, probably a surprise for some people. I think the Pirates are going to have a big bounce back season this year and make the postseason uh, again.
Buster only with us. Now, Buster, it just sounds to me like Subway Series. I mean, you know, it's going to be perfect. Yeah, okay, that's where you want to like, <laughs> cover your ears because I've got the Cubs and the Indians in the World Series again, except this time I've got the Indians winning the World Series. They went so far last year, but Joe Girardi looked at me a couple weeks ago. He said, you know, the Indians did a lot last year. They didn't even have their best player. Michael Brantley, who was dealing with a shoulder issue, was limited to 11 games. He's back, and he looks great so far this spring. Edwin Encarnacion is their new cleanup hitter. Uh, that is a dangerous team. The big question is going to be the physical hangover on the pitching staff, which had to work, had to work so hard in early November. And I know from talking to Chris Antonetti, their team president, on Wednesday, they feel like that they made some adjustments to try to help make up for that. Buster, did they uh, did they change the uh, contract for Drone Boy Trevor Bauer? I am no longer allowed to play with drones during the season. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I, <laughs> you know. He, it's interesting because he came through that uh, last year, and generally speaking, the perception of him, even though he, he got injured in the drone within the organization, was, you know what, he handled that really well, but they still have no idea what to expect out of him. Buster only, it is baseball season this Sunday. Right here, we're going to have the uh, the Yankees game, and then we're also going to have Cubs-Cardinals at night. Uh, Buster, just hearing your voice, man. I know it's like it's like 38 degrees outside right now, but I feel like it could easily be 75 when you start talking. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it, and uh, let's hope for that warm weather to get here in a hurry. Because I can tell you this, working those sidelines when it's 30 degrees ain't fun. <laughs> Buster, we, we're so glad to have you back. Uh, have a great call. Are you out this weekend? Oh, yeah. We've got Cubs and Cardinals yes. as part of the Sunday nice. night crew again this year. And then uh, the next morning we fly down to Texas. We've got the Rangers and the Indians on Monday night. Oh, man, looking forward to all this. I, baseball's back. I, I couldn't be happier. Buster, safe travels, and we look forward to talking to you next week. That sounds good. Thanks, guys.